Welcome back to the channel, Knights Multimedia. My name's Warren and I'm going to be your host. It's so nice to see you again. It's so nice to have you here with me as we go through this process and have a look at a DIY website. Why should we, and if we should, how should we build a website? At the end, you can decide for yourself if you should make a DIY website. So let's have a look at what is involved. What is involved in a DIY website? Well, first let's have a look at what DIY means. A DIY in general means do it yourself. But DIY could mean do it done by an amateur. Do what you want to do, not having the real tools or understanding why you're doing it. Would you build a table if you were clueless and had no idea? Would you go and be a professional dancer if you had two left feet? All of those things require practice time. A DIY website is exactly the same. A DIY website requires time. Where should your time be? Let's have a quick word from our sponsor. We're going to delve right in. Every time I decide to build a website, what do I do? Well, I go and get a quote. I, I phone up somebody or I look up somebody or I ask a reference and they give me a reference of somebody that can build me a website. I'm all excited and I got nothing together because I just want a website and I have no idea what I'm putting on that website. And although we've discussed before what is required when building a website, well, clearly, I never watched those videos, so I don't know what is there. I will leave a description or I'll leave a link over there as we go along. So you can also have a look at those videos. You want a website and you need to build a website, but it costs so much. You're excited. You ask a quote. You say to somebody, please give me a quote on a website. And they go, oh, for that website, that's going to be... Five thousand dollars or twenty thousand rand, forty thousand rand. I've heard of people paying one hundred and sixty thousand rand for a website. Yes, I mean rands because we're in South Africa, so divide it by fifteen or whatever you want to get to dollars. Now that's a lot of money to spend on a website, even for middle-sized companies. There's a lot of money to invest in a website that sits right next to somebody else's website that if you do not promote and sell and grow and do something yourself about it, just stand still. It's like buying a car, parking it outside in the garage and not touching it again. A, to me, that's just a waste of time. Unless you have a really specialized website that needs special coding like a bank, credit cards that work in the background or very high security access and stuff like that, yes, then you're going to spend that kind of money. But for a general website, no. So I can't afford a website. Everybody I ask for a website, they're too expensive. And I've looked at some of the websites that they built and they don't look that hard. They actually look pretty easy on the surface. Do I just decide I'm going to build one myself? Or do I maybe get my son to build it? Because, you know, he's pretty good. He's at school and he takes CAT, one of those subjects, and he knows how to build a website. He, he knows where the enter key is. I can get him to build it. Or I can spend a bit of time. I can watch YouTube channels. Awesome. Thanks, YouTube. We're in a world that takes or gives. 
thankfully this entire group of people on YouTube are givers because they are they enable us they give us what we need to grow into what to do things for ourselves, and that's awesome we won't look at should we yet we're still looking at can we can we build a DIY website can we get our child our neighbor a friend to slap a site together and then we're excited about our new website and then wonder why we won't get to should the later we can build a website we can go and watch a video we can get a WordPress template from somewhere that's free there are hundreds of them we can get Elemental we've watched the video we can see how easy these people click here and click there and click there and click there we don't realize that they've been clicking there for the last 10 years or five years and they experience this is what they do for a living they can do it they know how to do it they know the consequences of when they put stuff in you can learn yes and that's what's great about youtube you learn you learn how to do something i would never imagine how to make a knife now i follow a few guys and they make knives and i think that's pretty easy i still haven't made one but it's interesting to watch and nice to learn and the science behind it what temperature it needs to get to well your website has a temperature as well and it has all these things facets that come into it to build an end product now if you just picked up a piece of metal and started filing on it eventually it, it might look like a knife but nothing that you're actually going to be proud of really and nothing you can really go and put in your kitchen and decide this is what I'm going to use because that knife is not going to be tempered properly it's going to be shaped properly it's going to be horrible in the hands the blade's going to fall apart the, I mean it's going to be a disaster why because you haven't got a clue and it takes time to get a clue that time is what's important yes you can build a website you can stop everything else around you and you can learn and do research and you can put your website website together and you go and you've seen how in your country where you can get domain space and so you rent domain space a couple of dollars a couple of rands whatever it is and you've seen how you can register a domain and, and you can see how important it is to register domain for your brand to actually have Knights Multimedia and not Knights Multimedia dot Wix dot com or Knights Multimedia dot WordPress dot com or some funny other thing that is out there. No, you've seen the importance of having your own brand. And so you register a domain and you register or you rent a place to put it. Great. They send you the login, and now you don't have a clue again. You're sitting on a control panel. You watch another video. Half an hour later, you can install WordPress. You do that. It doesn't work for whatever reason. Oh, there's the wrong PHP. It's not the right one. Now you've got to figure that out. But okay, after a few hours, you're up and running. WordPress is installed. You've logged in. And now you watch another video and another video. And eventually you add a page and then you figure out hey, i don't really like this theme what do i do now so now you've got another theme and you keep changing things around what are you doing yes you're growing yes you're learning yes you're building a website but you're taking a lot of valuable time time that should be spent on what there's a reason why you buy a lounge suite and you don't make it there's a reason why you buy kitchen tables and you don't make it there's a reason why you buy a kitchen cutlery or crockery and you don't make it. It doesn't mean you can't make it. It's just easier to buy it. Sometimes it's expensive. Sometimes it's cheaper. Why would you want to make it? That's the question. So for a DIY website, there are certain things it needs. Absolutes. And again, I will link it below. There are certain things that you need to make sure your website has. 
things like white space, things like compression, things like SEM, SEO, SSL, HTTP. There are so many abbreviations and expressions that escape my mind, but all of these things you need to learn about. There's a reason why your form doesn't just work. No, you need SMTP to make it work. There are so many technical things involved in your website that you don't think of, that you have no idea, no clue that happened in the background. A website isn't just what you see. It's all that code behind it. On top of it, all you can do is use somebody else's template. You can take their design, their workout, and put your information in it. So you restrict it to them. Okay, so now you go and you get yourself a Elementor, or one of these other builders, Divi, and uh, you start designing your own. But you still don't understand exactly what a website requires. You don't understand how it's meant to work. Now, psychology of people, psychology of the viewer, the person that comes to you, marketers have spent billions of hours and dollars figuring out how to persuade your customer to buy from you, how to build a marketing tunnel, funnel. You can build a tunnel some other time. Even that, you get somebody to do it for you, probably fall on your head. But to build a funnel, yes. The process of building these marketing funnels, which we will discuss in a future video. All of these things take place on your computer. They take place on your website. When somebody comes to your website and they look at it, they need to be stirred inside so that they want to do something. Do you know what a CTA is? Do you know what a click rate is? Do you know all these expressions? Do you understand Google Analytics, your website's analytics, the control panel? All of these things need to be built in a way that makes your website effective. Yes, you want to go and open up a magazine. You can go and take 20 photos, slap it into an editor of some kind, put some writing underneath, print them and have them glued together and call it a magazine. 100% you made a magazine. How many of those do you think you're going to sell? Who's going to want to look at what you've made? Why? Because you don't know what you're doing. An editor, a developer, a processor, all these a producer, all these people to come together with years of experience, a writer, a photographer, everything comes together to make a magazine. Why do you think you can just put it together with zero knowledge or looking at a couple of videos on YouTube? Your website's the same. All of these things work together to build a website. If you can't do all of those things, if you don't understand all of those things, how can you expect to build a website? So, can I build a website? Yes. Should I build a website? <laughs> Let's discuss that now. That is the question. Should you build a DIY website? Well, let's look at it from different aspects. Let's look at it from building a brand or building hobby. Let's take a hobby for instance. My uncle, he retired. He worked his whole life and he was very good. He drove trucks. It wasn't anything with had wheels on it that he couldn't drive, that he couldn't reverse, which was even more amazing. He eventually became a manager of a fuel station, petrol station, we call him a garage. He got a manager, he ran the place. Eventually, he decided it was time to settle down, relax, kick your feet up and enjoy nature. His nature was he used to race those yachts, little radar controlled yachts. But you could only do that when the weather's windy. You could only do that on a social basis once a week. What was he going to do while he's sitting at home all the time? So he decided he's going to make lampshades. Actually, he decided he's going to do just some woodworking. And he bought a lathe and he started turning out bowls. But bowls are bowls and, yeah, well, they're just a bowl. 
but a lampshade now that's something that you can put really make something nice so he made beautiful lampshades and they were well made exquisitely crafted from really good wood expensive wood and he sold them and it was a hobby the money he made allowed him to buy more wood kept his hobby going and make some extra money to go on a holiday every year it wasn't a business there was nothing he was going to hand down he wasn't teaching anybody he had no channel to show people it was just something for him to keep busy did he need a website well it would have been nice if he had a website he didn't but it would have been nice why well he he did sell his products to shops and those shops went and sold it on to customers so he did a b2b business and Everywhere he went, they said to him, show me some pictures of what you've got so I can order them. And so he would flip out this little photo book that he had and they'd have a look. But he couldn't make a whole lot of those photo books and he couldn't leave them behind. And unless you give it in a nice photo, it doesn't look nice printed, just didn't. So to avoid spending extra money, he just walked around with a little photo book. This is a photo of this one. This is a photo because people want to see the different options, different woods, what it would look like. If you had a website, think how easy it would have been. Yeah, yeah, you just come find me, aussie.co.za, and there's all my woodworking stuff in it. And you can have a look and see, and you can order. You can put in a, a bespoke order, and I'll make it specially for you and ship it out to you. No problem. Because it was just a hobby, could he sit down and have built his own website? Yes, he could have. Because he just needed something to showcase so people could have a look and decide to buy. Would people buy off it? Now, personally, I wouldn't, because I know he couldn't build a website that would look professional. And I don't deal with people that aren't professional, because if you deal with amateurs, you get amateur. So, can he? Yes. Should he? That is the question. Now let's have a look at different industry. Let's have a look at a friend of mine. He's a driving instructor. That is a professional job. You're trusting your life. Were you trusting your child's life in his care? You need him to be absolutely professional. If he had an amateur website, if you went to his website, Infinity Driving School, and you looked at it, and this thing was messy and not laid out nicely, and it took forever to load, and the compression was bad and there was no SSL and all of these things you'd think oh this guy's just a fly by night uh, he hasn't been around long and I trust him if I hand over all the money for the 10 lessons am I, is it a good investment there's no testimonials or uh, you know am I prepared to invest what I have in a bad website because that's what you're doing your brand, your website is your brand. Should he build his own website? Absolutely not. Why not? He knows how to instruct people to drive. That's what he's good at. If he's not out there working, earning money, he has no living. So if he decides, I'm not doing the five lessons for today, I'm going to sit at home and figure out how to build a website, A, his brand stops because he stops. B is changing focus. Wouldn't it be easier to pay somebody, as he did, to build a website for him? That way he can carry on building his brand. He can carry on doing what he knows best and he gets the best opportunity for the best website. at a little bit of money. Can he build a website? Within time, yes, he could. Should he build a website? No, it would damage his brand. Another friend of mine, for instance, he does coffee. He brews coffee. He imports it from all over the world and he puts it through this process and he cooks the coffee, he bakes it. Candlestick makes it, I don't know. He brews this coffee and then he will either give it to you in bean form so that if your coffee machine can grind it or he grinds it down to the right um, consistency powder for your machine. Can he build a website? Yes, he can. Why? 
because he could go and through all these YouTube videos and see how easy it is, easy it is, and he could put a website together. And when you look at it on the surface, there's a menu, there's this icon, there's a picture, and there's some products underneath. Awesome, he's got a website. Is that all it is to building a website? He has no idea when it comes to all the, everything else, SSL, when it comes to compression, when it comes to SEO, SEM, he has no idea. What he does know about is beans. When you ask him about coffee, when you ask him about the bean, when you mention what coffee maker you got, he knows everything about it. Why? Because that's what he's good at. He knows how to turn that bean into the best product for you without adding anything to it. No preservatives. He makes it fresh just for you. And delivers it to your house. What better service do you get? If you were going to buy your product or your coffee from him, you look at hygiene, experience, you look at how good he is. You're going to buy a coffee and spend money on a coffee, which are, can be quite expensive. Don't you want the best coffee? Don't you want to know that your coffee is not being burnt or something like that? For you to do that, you need to have trust in that person that's making the coffee. So, if you go to his website and you look at his website and you decide his website isn't trustworthy because it just isn't built right, can he? Yes. Should he? Will it damage his brand? Now we look at our sponsor, findatour.co.za. Great company, been around for not so long, but the people that work in the industry in that company, two decades, three decades worth of knowledge that's sitting in that company. Now, tourism in South Africa has taken a massive blow over the past few years. And with the virus, it's, it's come to a standstill. But all of that will go away. All of that will lift in time. And then the tourists will come flooding back in to Cape Town. Why? It is such a beautiful place. People want to see the beauty. People want to know what's here. People want to understand where they're going. Can they build their own DIY website? Sure. And there are some of them they probably have in the industry. But have they? No. Why not? Because they specialize in tours. Their knowledge is looking after you, giving you the best in your holiday, your memories. Travel the way you want to travel is their motto. Their motto isn't, let's do it yourself. Yes, if you wish to travel yourself, they can arrange things for you so that you can do it safely and instruct you where to go, what time to go, where not to go, what to do, what not to do. All of those things come to their experience. If they had to ignore all of that, and decide to put their experience into building a website, wouldn't you feel it? In the world we live in, there are so many scams out there. There are so many people trying to take advantage of you. And unfortunately, in India and some other places, they've actually infiltrated the tourism industry. Why? You've got to hand over thousands of dollars to somebody for a package you haven't received, going to a country you don't know, there's place there for scams. So if you come to a website and you look at it and that website isn't professional, it isn't set up properly, it isn't inviting, you're not going to trust it. Why would you trust spending thousands of dollars on a place you've never been to people you don't even know exist that when you get there, who knows what I'm going to get? No. You want to be able to look at their website, see the type of work that they do, have a look at the samples of the tours that they offer to see what is on offer, to see how professional they are, to see about the electricity and do they tell us about that? Do they take me from the airport to the hotel? 
Or do I have to find my own way? Must I catch an Uber? I don't know who's going to be that driver. Do you, do you give me a guide or a driver? How qualified are they? Do I, the vehicle I'm in, is it a proper registered tour vehicle? Or have you just hired one or I drive in your home one that I have no idea is it actually safe? Only a professional website or any professional website developer would understand what needs to be made for that industry. Why? Because they would have to go and learn it. Building a website isn't just about putting in images and text together, some copy. No, it's about understanding the industry and building what the industry needs. Not building industry norm. It must be better than the norm. Everybody else's norm. We're better. So, can they build a website? Sure they can. Should they build a website? No, it would damage their brand. Lastly, let's look at you, your knowledge. Now you've come, you've obviously had a look at the title of this video and you thought, I can build a website. I've I built one or two before and um, it's something I can do and I enjoy computers. Yes, I can build a website. That's something I can do. Should you? What you need to do is place a value on your brand. Remember, it's about your brand. Your brand is how people see you. You've worked many hours, many dollars, building your brand the best that you can. Maybe you've, for, for decades, been working on your brand. Your brand level or value is up here. Where must your website be? Where's its level? Down here? Because you do it yourself, or you get somebody that, just a family or friend to put some pages together. Doesn't that bring the brand down? Or must your website be right up there, taking the brand higher? You need to consider for yourself how much emphasis you're going to put on your website. If no one's going to see it, does it matter if it's a Porsche or a Mini? It's parked in the garage in the back, no one sees it. Do it yourself. But if you're actually going to ride that website, if you're going to go and pull it out into traffic, you're going to sit in traffic, the aircon's on, you're going for a nice comfy ride on a Sunday, going to the beach, you've got your family, the dogs, everybody's in it, the cats and the parakeet as well. If you're going on holiday, and you're driving many, many miles or kilometers, you're going in that website. Is that website going to get you where you've got to go? Is your car reliable that you can jump in it at a moment's notice and drive to another state or country? If it's not, then you can't do it. If your website is not qualified to take your business to the next level, how can you trust it? Should you build a website? You can, but should you? It's a decision you have to make. Something that you need to Consider your brand. Yes, you can take the time and learn how to do it. I've spent over a decade learning, two decades, three decades, learning to build websites. Do you have that kind of time, that investment that you want to make so that your website can be the very best it is, or that it can be, or match your brand? Because what you need to ask yourself is, if I'm prepared to build that website and I'm happy with the way it is, the fact that it's not shareable, the fact that it won't be found off search engines, the fact that the articles that I write are never going to be seen, the fact that everything I do looks is wrong in the background, but it looks okay in front. If that is the kind of website that you're happy with, then you've got to look at your brand and go, is that the brand I expect others to trust? What you put out as a brand is not your brand. What other people see and what they think about you is your brand. If they look at your website, can they see it's been made DIY? If it is, should you build a website? You decide. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned by this. I hope you've got an understanding. 
just how deep it goes. Can you teach yourself to swim? Yes. Am I going to take you out into the ocean and chuck you in, no matter how many visit videos you've watched? No, you'll drown. Treat your website the same. Treat your brain the same. Consider for a moment if you really want to trust your website to your brand. It can hurt you. Stay safe. Have a lovely day. I'll see you soon. Please like, share the hell out of this. Leave a comment. Tell me if you think it's worth your brand building a website. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Cheers.